Ana del Castillo, Jackson, Mississippi, daughter of dreamers, creator, believer that a better world is possible. Ebony Rain Nash, Eads, Colorado, practitioner of liberation, activist, and healer. Kayla Jacquez Smith, Memphis, Tennessee, womanist, justice seeker, lover. Malini Shri Krishna, Tamil, Bengaluru, India, daughter to Chitra and Shri Krishna, entrepreneur, creating foundations for liberation. When HDS contacted this group of women of color to let us know that our peers nominated us to serve as their commencement speaker, we had one thought, why not all of us? At this university, in this capitalist system, we are told to compete rather than to co-create. In this speech, we, Anna, Ebony, Kayla, Malini, weave our stories, our passions, our calls to justice into a mosaic of wisdom that we hope resonates with the graduating class. We bring the communities that shaped us, Jackson, Mississippi, Peru, Bolivia, and the spirits who guided us here into this space. We ask that you do the same. What communities guided you at Harvard Divinity School? From where are you watching this virtual service and who is next to you? In this moment of celebration and jubilation, I invite you to speak those names aloud. I say the names of Sally, Julio, Sara, Andrew, Charlotte, Aaron. I say the names of elders, Nell and Panchita. This graduation, this accomplishment is created in and by community. Today, may we feel the presence of our ancestors and give gratitude for every smile, uplifting comment and offering that brought us to this moment. In writing this speech, I reflected deeply on my last three years at HDS. I thought about so many of you, my peers, the classmates whose stories and lived experiences taught me more than any peer-reviewed text or professor. I often describe HDS as a place of intense personal and spiritual development. During my time here, I have traveled to Tijuana, Mexico to assist asylum seekers pursuing safety and freedom at our southern border. I visited Palestine with Professor Moore's Narratives of Belonging and Displacement course to witness and respond to the failures of US imperialist policies and neocolonialism. I have been challenged by Sheikh Yasser Fahmy to confront my ego and pursue spiritual resonance with my creator. I have been brought to my knees in wonder and amazement of our divine creator. HDS has taught me to find and love the God within myself by allowing me to see the God and light in all of you. Each of us walks away from this place with stories of challenge, stories of empowerment and moments that change us for the better. Hold on to those memories and relationships and use them to build the better world that is possible. The better world that is in the making because you exist. A better world is in the making because you exist. Small town girl makes it to big time Harvard, a saying that echoes the streets of my hometown. Growing up in a community of 800 people, I never thought of Harvard to be an attainable goal. Low income, first generation, woman of color. The barriers were preset. In addition, I identify as a child of an incarcerated parent, having to internalize the societal shame, stigma, and stereotypes at a young age prompted me to have a limited mindset. I remember when I was younger, my mom would come into the room to wake me up for school. She would sit gently next to me alongside the bed, place her hand on my back, and begin to tickle me up and down my spine. We called it the caterpillar. This is a grounding memory for me because the experience of the caterpillar was so sweet and so precious. It was as if she was lifting all the pain and pressure and hardships off my back, preparing me for the day ahead. My mother is a strong woman, working at times five jobs just to care for my sister and I. In a world so unmerciful as ours, I thank our creator for giving me such a gracious and strong-willed mother. She is whom I inherit the lens in which I see the world, the way in which I love others so freely. My mother is the embodiment of eternal love. The moment I stepped into Harvard, I dedicated my presence to my accountable community, and I want to name them here. People experiencing incarceration, marginalized and underrepresented communities, children with incarcerated parents, and my brothers and sisters of the Muscogee Creek Nation. 
As each of us have taken up our cross and embarked on this journey ahead, ask yourself, who is your accountable community? Who are the people that laid the road for you, that set your table and have fed you along the way? Who is it that you want to feed, to nourish, to love? Our time at HDS has been like none others, starting with the removal of the great oak tree, displacing our studies into a building that is not of tradition at HDS, and then struck with a global pandemic. We, are often, we often study apocalyptic narratives in our work, but who would have thought we would be living one of our own? Forced into praxis, our degrees are worth so much more than a virtual celebration. I see you, I see each of you for the work that you've done, and so I ask, at what degree is it considered the boiling point? Is it the master's degree? The point where our passions, lived experiences, and co-opted community boil to the top, we can't help but be great. And if this is our boiling point, the aroma must be delightful. May you use your knowledge, connections, and resources found here at HDS and build a community like none other. May you reallocate, redistribute, and reform the systems upon us in the name of justice, in the name of peace, and in the name of love. Class of 2021, congratulations. My friends, we have made it. And like the great W.E.B. Du Bois once said, the honor, I assure you, was Harvard's. The, the honor, honor, we assure, assure you, is was Harvard's. Harvard's. I have been transformed while at Harvard Divinity, by gaining better knowledge and appreciation of my roots, and by being in community and struggle with such wonderful humans. It was my people and Black ancestry that brought me to HDS. I come from the lineages of the Smiths, Sharps, Gossets, Watkins, Reynolds, and the Shrickwins. Black culture and the rich spirituality that come from places like Memphis, Tennessee and Birmingham, Alabama, truly sustains me. I'm constantly inspired when I listen to the Southern Black brilliance of Beyonce or the radically honest, poetic and revolutionary words from Tupac Shakur. Through creative expressions from the people, I've gained a clear understanding of how much we really do not take care of each other and make sure people are well. We are all aware of this and with this knowledge comes responsibility. We all have a responsibility to not only be truth tellers, but people of action. Being grounded in that undeniable truth of all of our full humanity motivates me to be intentionally working with and for others. With genuine relationship building and personal accountability, we can begin to all be liberated from the shackles of white supremacy. Real freedom and elimination of suffering in this world has to be the end goal in every community we are a part of. The students of HGS helped me stay grounded in this. I'm so grateful for the many genuine moments with my peers. My dear friend, Tom Aradada and I were the only two black MDiv students in our 2018 incoming class. We understood the importance of our time here at HDS as something much greater than the two of us. I have been in classes and have organized with Anna, Ebony, and Malini. They have all been shining examples of pouring love and radical honesty into our shared spaces together. All of our beliefs in collaboration and being innovators is why we found it necessary to deliver a joint commencement speech. In the words of Frankie Beverly and Mays, we are one. No matter what we do, we are one. Love will see us through. And that's the way it is. I pray for the well-being of all graduates and for the continued growth of HDS. The histories, theologies, and cultures we study and practice at HDS are very important. The world unfortunately reminds us of this every single day. I encourage everyone listening to this speech to never give up on the possibility of change or in the power of folks working together. Never, never give, give up, up on, on the, the possibility, possibility of change. change.
Growing up occupying identities and abilities that could not be named, should not have had to be named, losing friends to systems and substances, a pain that was shrouded by silence and shame, being dehumanized was normalized. These experiences I will not further delve into, not because I do not wish to keep reliving them, but because I hope not to be determined by where I come from as much as where I hope to go. What brought me here is a deep concern for truth in a world that is being torn apart by lies, by hatred and separation. I believe that it is this shared concern for truth that binds our whole community at Harvard Divinity School together. We all crave to represent love in a world that is crying out for its representation. In my time at HDS, I have been witness to each of our individual and collective quests for knowledge. For many of us, this has looked nothing less than the pursuit of liberation itself. I firmly believe that liberation is a collective struggle, a shared destiny. Today, I stand with three other people who are destined to do this work, destined to touch my life and teach me lessons I could not have learned in a more humbling, humorous and hopeful space. Three most striking lessons are, lesson one, that leadership is about enabling people to lead. It is about being the captain of a ship whose destination is collectively determined by everyone on board. It is not about an individual. It is about a vision that is worth weathering all the storms. Lesson two, that sometimes love needs to be tough if it is to remain true. That love without respect and honesty is not love at all. That a relationship is better lost than not based in a relentlessly and fiercely truthful love. And lesson three, that our identities may shape us. Our roots may determine how we came to be and how we are in the world, but they do not have to determine where we go or how we imagine the world to be and who we grow and get there with. As we embark on the journey that is the rest of our lives, I want to pay my respect to this space, our Harvard Divinity School, that gave us unique opportunities to imagine how we could shape the world through love and move against the abundance of hatred that plagues it. This space allowed for the intertwining of our unpopular paths paved by humor, prayer, resilience, and unconditional daring. I learned laughter is the language of God. When I speak of this space, I do not speak of the classrooms or the curriculum. I speak of my community, everyone who has led me, listened to me, and loved me. So today, I too want to make sure you know that I see you. I speak directly to your humanity, to your energy, to God, to whatever name you choose to call the divine, that we join our spirits together on this quest to not only seek truth, but create cures that can vanquish unnatural hatred and separation in a world that is so naturally beautiful. Thank you to all the people who held me and brought me here. Thank all the people who held you and brought you here. I thank you Amma and Appa, Ragini, Pati and Tata, you taught me, in the words of Langston Hughes, to hold fast to dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken wing bird that cannot fly. You taught me, together, anything is possible. Together, together anything, anything is, is possible. possible. Class of 2021, may you continue to cultivate joy and seek justice everywhere. May you fully step into your story and claim the vision of collective healing as your own. May you live authentically and with a purpose that is rooted in equity for all. May you hold fast to dreams so we may manifest a reality that includes you, me, and everybody as a community true to the love that brought us here and will take us far and beyond.